everyone, it's Shari here today, and I am going to be making this fun fall pull tab card using a couple different fall sets. So first I'm going to use the Basket of Apples from Thinks of Bundle. I'm going to use this cute little dog from Happy Halloween, and I'm going to be using some of the pumpkins and the little crows from Happy Harvest. I am going to be doing coloring with colored pencils in this video, so I'm going to use the black licorice ink rather than the jet black ink because the black licorice ink we don't have to worry about it smearing or it's need to be copic friendly so i'm just going to ink up my basket of apples and then i'm going to take my stamp chamois and i'm going to wipe off the ink on that top apple so that it does not stamp i just want the bottom apples i'm going to use the individual apples in the set to create the apple that goes on top of the little dog's head. So I just wiped off the ink off that top apple very carefully. And then when I stamp down, you can see that I just have the bottom half of that pile of apples. You can see there's a little ink on top, but that really doesn't matter because we're going to be cutting it off. So I'm just going to go ahead and stamp out all my other images. So I've got the little dog. I'm going to stamp out a couple of the single apples from that set. And then there's two sizes of pumpkin in the Happy Harvest set that I'm going to stamp out here and use. I'm also going to stamp out a couple of the little birds that are in that set to use to decorate my card as well. So I've sped this up and I'm just going to show you how I colored one of each of the apples. I'm coloring three different color of apples in this basket. And I'm basically using two different shades of colored pencils. So I've gone in with my lightest shade and I've put a very light layer down. I'm going to go with my darker shade where the shadow would be and then I can go back with my lighter one and add some more color and kind of blend that shadow out a little bit. So you can just go back and forth till you get the look that you want. It's better to go in lightly and then add pencil to it because you can't really take it away but you can always add more color. I'm doing the same with the green. I've got two shades of green. And I just went in with the lighter first, a very light layer, and then I'm going to go in with the darker. And actually, this one I added an even darker one just right in the edge. And then I'll go back and forth to my lightest one and blend those out. Much the same way I do with my markers. Now I'm going to do the yellow apple in the same way. And I'm actually using some more muted yellows rather than some very bright yellows because it is an apple after all, and I just think this helps with the fall look. I'm going to be using some orange colors in some of the rest of my cards, so this will match perfectly. Now I'm going to go in and color my basket, and same concept here, two colors, just blending them out and adding the color in layers. And I'm actually going to do two different colors on the basket so that the horizontal bands that go around it look different than the rest of the basket. And I just think it gives it some nice definition to have those two colors. So you can see I used some red browns for the main body of the basket, and now I'm using some more chocolate colored browns for the bands. And I just went in with a darker one right on the edge, and I'm just pulling that pencil from the edge towards the center to kind of create the illusion of it being round. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my dog. I put a lot of color down on him um, because he just wasn't dark enough to begin with. And I didn't like that I could see my pencil strokes. So I colored in, him in a lot. So you can see I'm doing some shading where some shadows are. But eventually I'm going to put down a lot of pencil and you won't see that quite as much. For him, I actually went in with a little bit of gamsel at the end and kind of softened the color up just a little bit but you do not have to do that i just had so much pencil down so now for my pumpkin i've gone in with a light orange going in with some darkers i'm just going to start to pull those up from the bottom back to a lighter one and then i actually went in with the yellow that i used on the apple the darker yellow and I pulled up that orange a little bit. And you'll see that on the little ones, 
actually used more yellow just so that the pumpkins weren't exactly the same. So you can see here I'm blending with the yellow and pulling those oranges together. And then for my little crows here, I'm using some French gray, gray colors, and I just use a lighter and a darker. I don't want them to be black black, even though they're crows. Um, you still want to see the lines and the eyes and the details of the image. So now that I've got them all colored, you can see I use my coordinating dies to cut them out. And then I'm going to go in with my scissors and I'm going to trim that top part of the basket of apples off. And I'm being sure to leave a little bit of a white border around it, just as if the die actually cut it out this way. So we are making a pull tab card. So I've cut out the pull tab from some speckled eggshell cardstock. And I'm also cutting some of those birch trees, which I'm going to use here in just a little bit. So I've set those off to the side. And then I'm going to use some of the robin's egg blue spiffy speckles. I'm cutting this with the largest of the outside in stitch rectangles. So it'll create a nice little mat on a regular size card base. And then I'm going to cut the notch at the top where the pull tab is going to go. So first thing I want to do is I want to find the center. So I'm just using my ruler here and I'm using the centering part of it to find the center. I've marked it and then I'm just going to draw a very light pencil line down the center of the rectangle. And this will give me a guide to cut out the little notch at the top. It will also give me a guide to cut out the slot where the pull tab is going to go. So I'm just going to line this up with the very top of the rectangle. So that bar that goes long wise, you just butt that right up against the paper. And then I'm going to make sure that the notch part of the die is lined up with the pencil line. And then I can just hold it in place with a little bit of tape and run it through my die cut machine. So here is a piece of cilantro cardstock cut with that same outside end rectangle. So it has that same stitching edge just on the bottom. This is going to be the ground. So I'm going to use one of the simple stitched hillsides to cut the top and make a little rounded arch for my ground. So the stitching detail of the rectangle is only on the bottom and the two sides, and then this will finish off the top. So again, I'm just centering it up using my grid mat, making sure the hill is nice and even, and then I can hold it in place with a little bit of tape as I run it through my die cut machine. So I wanted to define the edge a little bit, so I'm going in with some mode long distress ink. This is just regular distress ink and a blending brush and just kind of darkening up the top edge of my ground. This just adds a nice definition to the edge of it and gives some depth to the scene that we're creating. So that's going to go along the bottom. I don't have it glued on just yet, it's there just for placement. I want to go ahead and put the apple on top of my little dog's head. And I'm using a glue dot because I've used colored pencil to color these, so it kind of has a waxy finish to it. And I just wanted to make sure that it held really well. So instead of using liquid glue, I'm using a glue dot. Now I've put my little dog behind the basket to where he's hidden, and I marked where the top of the apple is, and then I pulled him up where I want him to go, and I marked the top of the apple there too. So I can see on my piece of paper, it may be hard to see on your camera where I need to put my slot. So I'm putting it down where the bottom tick mark is. The top tick mark is more of a guide for when I put the pieces back on. So this is the straight slot that comes in the pull tab add-on. The curved slot is for the toaster set. So we don't need that one. This is the straight one. And I'm just going to hold it in place with some tape. And now you can see there where I have the slot. So for the pull tab mechanism, it has some score lines. You're going to fold in and then out, kind of making a Z. And you can see that the shape here is kind of in the shape of a piece of toast, because that's what it was originally designed for. So we're going to modify it a little bit so that the whole thing is hidden behind our little dog. So I've just 
folded it the way it needs to be folded. And now I'm going to figure out exactly where he needs to go. And the best way to do this is to actually put it through the slot so I can see how high it needs to be when it's pulled all the way up. And that's why I put that first tick mark in. So I can slide it all the way up and make sure it's lined up with the notch at the top. Then I can line my apple up with the little tick mark that I made before for how high I want the dog and the apple to go. And then I'm just gonna trace around the edges so I can see the shape of the dog and the apple and what I need to cut off of these little taps. So once I have that outline there, I can use my scissors and I can cut off that extra so that everything gets hidden behind the dog. So what I'm gonna do is since I traced on the very outside edge, I'm gonna cut on the inside of that line a little bit so that I'm sure nothing is peeking out. So it's really just a guide. You could probably just cut it straight up if you wanted to, but I wanted to make sure there was plenty of cardstock to hold so that. Also, with the shape of it there, it kind of helps me as a guide when I put him back on because you can see where the ears kind of fall. So now I can just check and make sure I have cut enough off. If I haven't, you can always trim a little bit more off. Now before I want to assemble, I want to make sure I erase that pencil line. So now I'm going to start putting my pull tab together. So I'm going to go ahead and put the ground on. And then I'm just placing these trees. They're not glued down just yet. This is me more making sure that I could tuck them behind. And then before I do anything else, I also wanted a tree canopy at the top that I'm going to make out of the clouds, the cloud border dies. So I cut a piece of yellow cardstock with, with the same rectangle, and I use the blue to help line up the tab in the same place so that now that they layer exactly over each other, and then I can use the cloud border die to cut my tree canopy above out of the yellow cardstock. And then I'm just going to define the edge of that a little bit again using some wild honey distress ink. You can see there how that's going to fit on there perfectly. So now I'm going to work on adding these trees. Now that I know that they're exactly where I want them. So I'm using a little bit of liquid glue. I'm just gonna glue those in place. You could add as little or as many trees as you like. But I think three is the perfect number. And I usually try to put the fat one and the skinny one together and then that middle sized one by itself. And then once I have those in place, I'm just going to trim off the extra that I don't need sticking up there. And now I can add the canopy on top. And again, I'm just using my liquid glue. This is going to hold nice and strong. And this will also allow me to line it up and shift it around so that my notch gets lined up perfectly. All right, now to put the pull tab through, I'm just going to fold those two pieces up and thread it through the slot. And once it's through the slot, I can fold those two pieces down and make sure that the tab is lined up with the notch above. And this is just me making sure it's straight, and I'm using the grid on my mat as a guide for that as well, just to double check myself. So now I can adhere down my little dog, and you can see the shape there, so you can see exactly where his ears are going to go on that tab. You want to make sure you don't put too much glue. You don't want it to squish out and cause your mechanism to get stuck. So just enough to hold in there. You don't need too much. Make sure he works properly. And then now I'm going to use that little guide that comes in the set too. So you want to put some adhesive on the middle part 
between the two folds. You're going to put that behind the pull tab. Make sure it's lined up with the notch and then you're going to adhere it down below the notch. You want to make sure you're below the notch so you don't see it. And this is just going to be a guide to keep this tab straight. So once the back part's adhered down, you can add a little bit of adhesive to that little flap and you can fold it over, basically making a slide for that tab to slide through. So make sure it's pushed all the way into the down position and then you can trim off the extra. This allows you to make a tab as long or as short as you want. So that's why it's much longer than you need it to be. So just make sure it's in the down position before you trim it off. And then you can take the die that comes in that set to make the little pull cover with the arrow. And I cut it out of the same cardstock as my tree canopy so it would kind of match. I'm gonna add a little bit of adhesive. It's folded, I'm just gonna fold it right over the edge. Now I'm going to put some foam tape on the back. I've just covered the whole back with foam tape except for the center where that mechanism is that slides. So be sure you stay away from that. I've got a craft cardstock card base here. I'm just gonna put that on there. And this is going to allow you to kind of grab hold of that tab a little bit better because it's popped up off the card base. I'm just going to check, make sure he still slides nicely. And then now I can put the apples over top. So you can see there, I'm just putting the little foam squares right around the bottom and the edges so that the dog will fit behind it, sort of in the pocket behind the basket. Make sure he's all the way down. And then I can position my basket to completely hide him. I just think this is so fun. So now I've got all my other pieces and I'm going to start to assemble the cards. So there's the pumpkin. There's that other apple that I colored. Here's these little tiny pumpkins. So they're kind of like ornamental pumpkins, I feel like, because they're smaller than the apple. Then I've got the little crows to add around. And I'm using foam squares for all these to kind of pop them up and give them dimension in the seam. Now I've got some little leaves cut from one of the leafy backdrops. And I'm just using a little liquid glue to kind of put those around and enhance the look of my birch trees. I had a little bit of pencil mark on that one. <laughs> so that's what I was doing here, just sort of erasing it off. I already had these cut. I like to keep a whole bunch on hand if I cut extra and I just save them. So I have them. And then I'm using a different shape of leaf cut out here, but keeping with the yellow, I'm just tucking those in to fill it in a little bit more. And then here is my finished card. And I just think it's so cute with the little puppy that pops out of the basket of apples. Adorable. So here's another look at the card. And I just love those fall colors and that cute little dog that pops out of the basket. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.